Kirby, you mentioned the other night that this week is, is playing more of a traditional offense. Just what has the process been like in the first couple of days of practice of, of implementing more of those calls? And what does it say about the defense that they're able to adapt to you know, such different offenses with your week? Well, you have to adapt on defense. You adapt or you die. So you, you have no, no choice but to adapt. That's what you have to do. Um, it's been good. Um, it's, uh, it's, it's, they enjoy it more. You know, we get to show clips of the 49ers and NFL teams. And, uh, you know, that intrigues the players a lot more playing against an NFL style offense. Uh, it motivates them uh, a little more because they know that, that a lot of teams look at those those tapes. You know, their, their coordinator coming from the NFL. It's more style of, of what they'll play against at the next level. So. That part excites him. Coach, talking about fourth and turnover, obviously Jalen has done a very good job of that in the last uh, you know, couple of weeks in making that happen. With him, though, is it just about the, 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 the talent? I mean, that he's a very good football player. There's some technique involved in how he gets it done. No, he's, he's uh, explosive. He's quick. He's disruptive. I mean, he's in the backfield. Uh, you know, he's on the quarterbacks in terms of when you get to quarterbacks before they throw it, you typically have a shot of getting a, um, a force out. You know, and uh, and you get running backs in the backfield, maybe before they're 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 passing line of scrimmage. You know, you got a shot to get an arm on a ball or knock it out. He's certainly a, a powerful, explosive player. So those guys tend to have more uh, turnovers outside of just strip outs. You sort of touched on this in your interview with Scott Manfelt last week, but how much of having the SEC championship game, the fact that it's been a while since you guys have won that game? worked as a motivator for this team because it seems like guys are really buying into, you know, yeah, winning the SEC is nice and we still want to go out and win every week and then ultimately set ourselves up for that SEC championship game. Yeah, we, we really haven't, I mean, we haven't talked about the SEC championship game or going to the SEC championship. That's, that's just not our conversation. You know? We keep our con conversations relative to what's one foot in front of us. and. Um, it really has never been mentioned as a goal or a, a, like, you know, nobody talks about that, you know, we just talk about Kentucky. Kirby, there's a lot of guys from the 2021 class who are contributing, kind of playing above their stars, quote unquote, and that was the kind of COVID class. Did that have kind of an impact on evaluation and maybe the guys more, did it make it you know what I mean? Like th that's a reason that guys may not have had quite as much hype, but they're having this immediate impact. Yeah, I don't know. I, I would, I would venture to say I don't know this for fact. It's just my opinion that, that everything would be off that year because there was no true evaluation. So, like, what are you evaluating it on? What are you basing it on? You know, I mean, the people who evaluate that in the first place, I don't think of them as. Uh, uh, experts at it, per se. I, I don't want to take their opinion over my own. I think that's something that, that we do well as a staff is evaluate. So regardless of which year or which rating or what people said, we go back and do a review of how those classes performed, how each guy did kind of after three years, because you can't get a real evaluation. So those guys really haven't had enough time to uh, be evaluated. But I, I don't, I just don't, it's hard to say they outperform their rating because I don't know their rating. I don't care about the rating. I care about our evaluation of them. Um, and we think our evaluation is uh, the most important. But you, uh, your program in Georgia overall, it seems has had uh, pretty good success with walk-ons. Uh, it, it seems like I see some kind of advertisement you guys send out, but how hard is it to get that pool? Uh, how much of a concentrated effort is it to get the uh, the numbers you think you need, and, and how rare is it to find what you need out of that pool? Yeah, it's not hard to find the pool. There's thousands of kids wanting. That it, the, the hard part is deciphering between what you're going to take, like, like, you know, because, you know, like some of the walk-ons have opportunities that we get that have scholarship offers. We got, you know, some, some of our preferred walk-ons have turned down full rides to schools and they want to come to Georgia, maybe because they want to go to school at Georgia, maybe because they want to play at Georgia. Um, but we got a pretty good track record of the, the PWOs. We only get a few of those a year. So we have a limited number of spots for an unlimited number of people. We don't have to like go beg people to walk on or, People are dying to do that. I mean, we get countless requests of that. 
Um, we're more selective of who we bring out there because some years we need a lineman, some years we need DB, some years we're short at running back. We're, we try to get our needs out of the walk-on class. And, uh, and every now and then, in our state especially, you've got tremendous high school players who get overlooked. And there's no greater example of that than Dan Jackson. Um, you know, several guys, uh, when I first got here, Prather Hudson, I mean, these guys were really good football players that uh, contributed. Aaron Davis, I think, was the one when I got here, um, that just really good athletes. So it's, uh, we're very blessed to have the opportunity to bring in the walk-ons we have. Kirby, the offensive line is up for the Joe Moore Award again. Just uh, how do you evaluate how far this offensive line has come this year, particularly having to replace two starters from last year and having a new position coach? Um, I think we spoke about it before. I, I had high expectations of this offensive line from the beginning, and I've been very pleased um, with this offensive line group. I, I, you know, I, I try to compare them relative to other offensive lines, not other Georgia offensive lines, other offensive lines we face in the current year. Because um, collectively, I don't know that the quality of football right now is as good as it's been in two, three, four years ago. There's, there, I mean, it's just hard to find really good quality units in all aspects. I mean, that's across the NFL, it's across college football, it's across high school football, everybody you talk to. Um, and I'm very pleased with the way our unit has performed. Um, could they do better? Yeah, but I've been, I've been very pleased with the depth, the use of the depth, and uh, how hard those guys work. So I think Stacy's done a tremendous job with them. Kirby, uh, Javon Bullard and A.D. Mitchell, what have they been able to do for you through a couple of practices this week? And uh, concerning A.D., I wanted to ask, who would you say or what players would you say have kind of picked up the slack the most with all of that time that he missed? Because I'm sure you guys were him, help, him being healthy, he's playing a ton of snaps. So who, who picked those up for you mostly? Well, Rosamy probably the most. I mean, Ladd and Marcus have played uh, – the most snaps, you know, and Marcus has been uh, beat up and banged up. He's been dealing with some injuries uh, the last two weeks, and he kind of recovers during the week and then gets out there and goes the best he can during the game. But, I mean, the, the beneficiary has been everybody, the backs. We've gone a little more 20 speed. The tight ends, we've gone more 12. I mean, uh, when you have less receivers, um, then you have to use other, other angles. But Dylan Bell, has played, played the X where, where he's been, but Marcus doubles as an X and a Z. So I would say Dylan Bell, Ladd, and uh, AD probably the most. I wasn't going to ask about Mitchell, but if you could update AD's uh, status, and I was going to ask about, you guys seem to have the right approach, you know, week to week. I wonder, coming off a uh, loss to Vanderbilt, if they've had the right approach with Kentucky. Yeah, they've had a good approach. I mean, I think there's a major league respect for um, Kentucky in our program because the, the kids that have played against Kentucky, it's been bloodbaths, man. Like the game last year was so physical, so uh, tough and rugged, and like they run a lot of physical runs. We learn to run a lot of physical runs, and you end up just clanging. And when you come out of the game, you're like really sore. So uh, that was that way, that, 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 that 14 to three or whatever game it was, maybe up there 2020, man, it was, we had guys dropping like flies. It was just really physical. So our guys respect. Kentucky, I respect uh, Coach Stoops, and that's, I mean, what they did last week has no relevance to what they'll do this week. How do you assess how your inside linebacker room has developed over the course of the year, given all the experience that you had to replace from last year from Kobe, Clay, and Channing moving on? Yeah, they've done a good job. Uh, need more depth in there. Um, Tresman and Ryan being back has really been a huge help to pop and smile because. You know, you, you can't really play two inside linebackers and get through a game. You gotta have three or four to rotate. It's like, you know, half D line, half D B and uh they gotta have some, some rest and some recovery and, and those guys have stepped up and helped them a lot and uh, you know, EJ's getting better, Jalen Walker's getting better. So that that room, you know, Schumann does a great job with those guys. He he prepares them from day one, so uh they've done really well considering who they had to replace. Um, where do you think Smile has grown the most, especially after this weekend? Smile, uh, probably maturity, being able to handle the failure or mistakes. You know, he, he struggled a little bit in the Missouri game when he had the injury. 
he made a couple mental errors, and then uh, he bounced back after the injury, and um, he's played with a lot more confidence uh, since then. Do you have an update on Javon and AD to this point? Yeah, I'm hopeful for both of them. I mean, I keep asking, I keep telling. <laughs> How have y'all assessed uh, Jalen Carter's performance since his coming back since his injury? He's been good. Good player, man. Kirby, I guess I, I heard that um, what was it, uh, at the Arkansas game, LSU had like chicken broth on the sideline because it was so cold there. I wonder if you guys not, not do that, but what, what do you do with Jacob besides putting on a heavier jacket on the sideline to uh, combat the weather? I don't know any tricks um, for that. I mean, we, we, we the players got their uh, tights, you know, they got their, their leg, they got different wardrobe they can wear. Um, but outside of that, there's not a lot you can do, you know, practice in it, prepare for it, uh, worry about the guy across from you and not the conditions. And uh, you usually get good outcomes when you focus on the task at hand and not the things you can't control. Yeah, given the unfortunate events that happened in Charlottesville yesterday, did you say anything to your team about that? Talk about that with them, given the horrors that happened there. Yeah, we 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 we, we talked a little bit about it today. I didn't I didn't talk about it yesterday because I didn't know much and I didn't know many of the details and still don't. Uh, I certainly got a lot of respect for Tony Elliott. I've known him, been a good friend of mine since he was at Clemson and I recruited at uh, Bama. We always spent time together on the road and just cannot fathom. You know, having to make that call to uh, someone's parents, and uh, you know, and Carla's up there, who I have a lot of respect for, and she did a tremendous job here, and, and to have to uh, go through that, and, and their team, and what they're experiencing, you know, our our hearts and, and, and really prayers go out to them. Take two more questions. One more. Time's up. <laughs> <laughs>